Good day and welcome back. We'll talk about the thin lenses. We'll learn about the formula for the refraction at spherical surfaces and then learn to derive the thin lens and also lens matter formula. First is about the refraction phenomenon which happen when light travel through medium of different optical density. As what we have learned in SPM physics, the velocity of light will change and this include the speed and also the direction of the path. We have learned how to use Snell's law in SPM to analyze the refraction pattern on the plant surfaces. Now, we will focus on the refraction at the spherical surface where the derivation is not needed. It is given as n1 over u plus n2 over v equal to n2 minus n1 over r. Well, there could be different sign convention for the formula that you may come across in the reference book. First is that the sign of the radius is depending on the type of surface that hit by the incident ray. Second type of sign convention, which is mostly used in the textbook, especially in Plange and Oxford, it depends on the location of center of curvature, and this will adjust the formula a little bit different than previous one, that the absolute value of n2 minus n1 is applied in the formula. Let's try a question from Parse in 2018. The compass about sign convention happen when the object is in a denser medium. So look at this question. There is a small bug inside a sphere with medium of refractive index 1.5, and it is 1.5 cm away from the center of curvature. So if we are referring to the spherical surface on the left, the object distance will be equal to the radius 4 cm minus 1.5 cm equal to 2.5 cm. Let's look at the formula. N1 should refer to the medium where the object is located, while N2 is the another medium. If we are using the first type of sign convention, the radius here is a negative value since it is concave to the incident ray from the object. But if we are using the second type of sign convention, the center of curvature is inside the denser medium. So it is a positive value. And we also need to remember to take the absolute value of N2 minus N1 that we will have 0 0.5 over 4 on the right-hand side of the equation. In the end, we will get the same answer from both equations that the image distance is equal to negative 2.1 centimeter. The negative value of V tells us that the image is virtual. It is at the same side with the object. So if you came across with different solution in the book, I would suggest you to stay with either one of the sign convention and try to do it again. For further discussion in my video here, I will choose the second type to solve any related question. Now, let's review the refraction again. Let's say we have an object that is 20 cm away from the spherical surface which has radius of 5 cm and refractive index of 1.5. If you apply the formula, you can get the image distance of positive 30 cm, which is a real image. Now, let's see what happens if the medium is a sphere and there is air medium at the back of the sphere. The light ray was supposed to land on 30 cm away from the spherical surface on the principal axis. However, we will pass through another medium again before it reaches the 30 cm. In the other word, there will be a second refraction occur. So here, we will apply again the formula to obtain the new image distance. The first image form previously will become the virtual object for the second refraction. It is virtual because it doesn't form yet in the actual situation. Here, we need to recount the object distance from the second spherical surface on the right, where we take the 30 cm minus the diameter, and then we have the object distance as negative 20 cm. Apply the formula again, and we can get the second image distance is equal to positive 5.71, which is a real image. Now, we'll start to talk about the thin lens and the lens maker formula. When we say thin lens, it is very thin that the thickness of the lens is very, very small compared to the object and image distance. With the reference to the previous illustration that I have discussed, the object distance can be approximated to the distance between the object and the axis of the lens. And the same thing happened also for the image distance. The derivation here will be similar to the previous one, Except that object distance for the second surface will be the same as the previous image for the first surface. The first image also becomes the virtual object for the second surface, so it is equal to negative v prime. The next step is to combine first and second equation, and finally we have this equation. Now, from what we have learned about the definition of focal point where all the parallel light ray will converge or seem to be diverged from. This is when the object is from infinity, the image distance is the focal length. Substitute this condition and we have 1 over f equal to n2 over n1 minus 1 multiply 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. And this is the lens maker formula. 
look at the left hand side, we shall have 1 over u plus 1 over v equal to 1 over f as the thin lens formula. So these are the two formulas can be used when dealing question about lens. The sun convention for this formula will follow the second time as I mentioned in the beginning. Let's try a question from the trial paper of College Tengkata Enam Petaling Jaya. We have a meniscus but we are not sure it is either converging or diverging. It is made of glass with n equal to 1.52 and the radar of 10 cm and 12 cm as shown in the diagram. We are going to identify the size of each radius. On the left, you can see it is a concave surface. The center of curvature is in less dense medium so the radius is negative 10 cm. Next, the center of curvature for the right side surface is in denser medium, which is also a convex surface, so the radius is positive 12 cm. Now, we are going to determine the focal length for this meniscus lens. Apply the lens maker formula that we have N2 as the refractive index of the medium in the lens, 1.52, N1 as the medium of the air. Put in those values of radii, can get the focal length is equal to negative 115 centimeter. Since it has negative focal length, it is a diverging meniscus lens. The next question is when the object is placed 20 cm from the lens, we should apply the thin lens formula and we can get the image distance is negative 17 centimeter, which is at the same side as the object. Lastly is the magnification. It is the ratio of image distance to the object distance. It is equal to 0 0.85. Now, we are going to try another question from the past year in 2015. This is quite special where we have biconvex lens immersed in a liquid of refractive index 1.65, which is higher than the refractive index of the lens. As we know that biconvex lens should be a converging lens, but let's do the calculation. Apply the lens maker formula, we will find that the focal length now is negative 55 cm. So this is quite interesting. As you can see that N1 is bigger than N2, when we calculate N2 over N1 minus 1, it will become a negative value. So the biconvex lens will function as diverging lens when it is placed in a denser medium. Now, let's see another question from Passe in 2017. A lens with power 4 diopter in A is made from a glass with refractive index of 1.56. It is given that one of the surface is convex surface with radius of 20 cm. Well, the power of the lens is the reciprocal of the focal length measured in meter. Using the formula of P equal to 1 over F, we can get the focal length is 0 0.5 meter equal to 25 centimeter. Next, we can apply the lens maker equation to identify another radius. Putting all those values, we will obtain positive 46.7 cm. The radius is positive, which means it is a convex surface to the air, and the center of curvature is in a denser medium. To learn about the design of the lens, it is part of spherical material. It will be biconvex lens with different radii, and it is a converging lens in air since it has a positive focal length. Now, we look at the third question. Explain the change in the power of the lens if it is immersed in seawater with high refractive index. From previous question, we have learned that when a biconvex lens is in denser medium, N1 more than N2, the calculation from N2 over N1 minus 1 will be a negative value, Hence, we have negative focal length and the power of the lens will become negative. To conclude this topic, we may see different formula with their different sign convention. We may refer to any of them, but I suggest you to stick to one of them to avoid any confusion. If you're using different sign convention from mine and you need any assistance, just let me know in the comment section below. So that's all for my discussion today. Please do leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.